Hello and welcome back to Suburban Hunt 365. I'm DJ. We're back in the reloading room again today. Today we've got one of Jersey's shotguns. Jersey was just gifted this shotgun. It is a Savage 720 semi-automatic 12 gauge shotgun. I love the details on that right there. And it's a good shape. I'll have to look up the serial number and see exactly what year this particular model is. But it's it's a really good shape, with the exception of the fact, and this is like believe why Jersey was gifted this shotgun, it won't fire. So Jersey and Dave brought this to me, and they were like, "Hey, DJ, this won't fire. Fix it." So we're gonna do just that. I broke this shotgun down just to kind of have a look at it, see what was going on with it. Pretty typical of the 720, the firing pin broke. So we got him a new firing pin, but also inspecting it, and I'll show you a picture of it here. Uh, the breech block had was cracked on the bottom part of it and somebody tried to brace that back together and make it hold which probably would work for a little while but it's not ideal it's not a good idea so what we've done is we've sourced a breech, breech block and a new firing pin all right so the first thing we're going to do in breaking this down just like most shotguns we're going to take the magazine cap and the forearm off so just like most shotguns bring it down pop that magazine cap loose like such forearm goes down I did have pressure on it you saw it come up when I let go of it so keep pressure on that forearm just slides right off then the barrel just comes right out like such we'll set that to the side for now you got slides right off spring slides off and your friction ring slides right off just like that now unlike other shotguns in order to get this guy out we've got to start breaking these down now what I do like about this you really don't need pins or excuse me you don't need punches to take this shotgun apart for the most part you have these screws in here that have a set screw and then the actual screw itself so you make sure that this sets that the screw itself is lined up for your set screw set screw comes out and it, a lot of it almost all of this is broken down with the flathead screwdriver just make sure you got the right size flathead so enough out of me let's get to the bench all right the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take off this buttstock here so basically this back screw here is your buttstock screw this is actually not attached to your buttstock so don't worry about this right now this is actually under some pretty good tension so we're going to leave that alone but for here we're going to go ahead and move this out of the way and then take this screw out you'll feel it get kind of loose at that point you can just pull it out with your finger so there's that screw all right so to get this off of here now what you need to do is move this sideways like this now i've seen people use like rubber mallets or stuff like this on the wood I, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to get this off of here. But basically what I do is I take my hand and I hit it at a down and backward angle and I basically just keep grabbing the stock like this. And eventually it comes loose. That way you're not marring up the wood, you're not marring up the finish, you're not risking hitting it with any type of mallet. Uh, yeah, it does wear on your hand a little bit, but it protects the actual shotgun. All right, now that we got the butt stock off, we're gonna go ahead and take out the action spring. The action spring comes along here and actually is what attaches to your bolt here and helps the action. But it's also putting a lot of tension on the action here, as you can tell. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pop that loose. So basically what you gotta do is you got a small little pin here and you don't even need, you don't have to have a punch. I did it with a pin the first time I took this thing apart. But since I have the proper punches here, what I'm gonna do is you just put pressure downward here and then just push that out. There should be almost no resistance once you get it close enough. Oh, of course I didn't grab the right size. The right size punch. So basically you just push down on here and then push out. Making sure not to lose it or the spring. You saw how fast that came out. Uh, so make sure you don't lose that pin. Your spring comes out. This particular one is a little bit stiff right here at the end. Uh, so what I've done is I just take a small pair of pliers and just kind of work that 
don't put too much pressure on there because you don't want to bend that spring but just enough to get that out of there so that is your action spring all right so with the ejection port down you'll see that you have your screws on this side and then on the other side it's actually going to be just the back side of those screws so you have to start from this side here with those screws here and like i said before we're going to start with taking that set screw out first and then we're going to take these two screws out here and what we're going to do is we're going to take the trigger assembly out of it first so using the correct size flathead screwdriver go ahead and take out the set screws if i was on the right one that would be great take out the set screw these set screws are really small like i said really small so don't lose those and take your screws out this particular part doesn't matter exactly which side you do first and get that one loose and then this back one a little stiff get it loose now with both of these screws you just get them loose and you've got to push them the rest of the way with this back one you can actually reach it with your hand and just pull that out like such put that there now with this other one you can use that you can use a pin for it too but I, again i have a punch just push that through to where you can grab it on this side right here and just pull that up and out and i had pressure on this which is why that thing shot out but keeping these set screws and the actual screws together will help you later when putting this back together so your trigger assembly as you can see just pull straight out like that so at this point we're going to continue there's one well, one more screw here left you can see um so let's go ahead and take that now this side has both of these set screws here or both of these screws are what's holding your your ramp in so let's go ahead and take that set screw out here now this particular screw only goes in to just this side of that ramp so it is not a long screw at all you can see there that's not a very long screw so set that set screw and that screw to the side flip this over and do the same thing here set screw and then the regular screw so now we've almost got all the screws on this thing out we are ready to take this ramp out of here now to get this ramp you can see that there's a spring here you can see where it's held on right there so what you need to do is you got to push down and in be careful this is under a lot of tension and get around that like that see that comes in and then let that loose once that's loose you can take this and you just lift it right off of there and now your ramp is able to slide up and out if i can get this gonna make a liar out of me there we go just goes up and out now this is riveted in so we're going to leave this whole assembly together you can clean it like that if you need to all right now that we have the lifter out of there now what we got to take out is the bolts uh, the bolt latch pin and that is actually right here you can see here if i use this you can see how that lines up with that hole right there line that guy up take your punch and push this through just got to make sure it's lined up it's going to be coming out of this hole here on the back side so it's got to make sure it's lined up so take your punch kind of line that up if you have to pushes it all the way out as you see now that pins out of there you can tell there's a little bit of tension on here when you push that out this is the latch the locking latch here go ahead and move that out putting pressure down and then you can get your locking latch out of here which sits like this and then there's a spring underneath that that gets to come out all right as you can tell now this moves freely all right in order to get the charging handle out what you need to do is take this guy lift him all the way up and then push the charging handle back to be able to do that i'll do that where you can see it now you're charging you lift this all the way up and then your charging handle will be able to move back and out of the way then you can push this forward and actually lay this down and then finish actually taking your 
breech block out like such. Now your charging handle part is just sitting in there. You just gotta move that forward and then that'll come out like so. Now we're gonna deal with our trigger assembly. Now the trigger assembly is where my previous comment about not needing a punch goes out the window. Basically what I meant by that was that you could take it apart and clean it pretty good without having a punch because you can clean this. As you can tell, you can really clean this up really nice just as it sits. But that's not how we roll around here. We're actually gonna break this bad boy down. So I'm going to take the trigger finger, the trigger, push it off. Safety works. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take the hammer out of the action position here, take that off. That just loosens that up. So we're gonna go ahead and take our hammer out. Punch that out. All right, pins out there, hammer's loose. Now we've got our safety sear in here in the back. So we're gonna go ahead and take our safety sear. This is this piece right here. We're gonna take our safety sear off. Now you can see there is a detent and a spring inside there. So when we do this, we gotta be careful once we get that pin out of there, not to lose that spring. So let's go ahead and take that guy out. That was a little bit of a bear, but all right, just remember you got your pin, so you push your pin out, set that to the side, keeping tension on your safety sear, pull the punch out, slowly let the pressure off of that spring, and then your safety sear comes out, and your detent, and then the spring itself comes out like such. All right, that is taking the safety, safety sear out, now we can actually take our mainspring off. This is what I was telling you about earlier. When we we're taking the four or the buttstock off, this is that screw there. So we'll go ahead and take this screw out. Let that fall. That takes your mainspring out. Your screw comes out. So that's your screw and your mainspring. All right. So there is that. Now we have our actual trigger assembly here. Our trigger actually. So let's go ahead and punch that out. Your pin comes out and your trigger just lifts up and out like so. so trigger comes out. Alright, now for the safety, if you want to, you can take a look here. There's a flat plate that is attached to your main spring here that goes up underneath here. And if you look real closely, that shiny piece that you see is actually a ball bearing. There's a small spring. This spring right here is pushing down that ball bearing, which clicks back and forth. So what you can do if you need to take this out of here is come up here to the front lift this guy up and then push let me make sure I put that on camera so you take a flathead screwdriver come up in here on this ball kind of lift up on it just slightly and then push your safety and then your safety will actually come right out now be careful when you clear this that ball is going to fall so you clear this out Well, actually that one stayed in so that's nice all right now that our safety is out of there if you find yourself needing to pull this main this <clears throat> safety spring down basically if you look real closely there's grooves right here you see this groove here someone on the back side here you can see how that groove is set right here right so basically what you can do you put your thumb over this area so that we don't lose that but then take this and just push this back slowly because again, once you get to that, you don't want to scratch it up. This guy just comes on out. Like such. And that is how you take that spring out of there. Now if you need to... Oops. 
do when we get a punch here. You can push out that ball bearing. Be careful not to lose that though, because you definitely need it. All right, so that is a complete breakdown of the trigger assembly. All right, we're gonna go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. Now we are getting to the actual breech block. Now, now that you have the breech block out of there, there's a pin that goes across your uh, firing pin to hold it in place. You can actually just take your flathead and just pull that out. That's not under attention anymore. Just like, just like that, and then pull that straight out. And now you can actually lift your link up and pull your firing pin out like such and as you can tell this one's broken so this is the block type flat type whatever you want to call it but you can tell this is broken off so whenever it was sending this home it wasn't hitting anything because it's missing about oh another half inch <coughs> So that was the first thing that we found that was wrong with this guy. So we're gonna go ahead and set that to the side. And now that you got your firing pin out of the way, you can take your link and just push this apart like such. And this is where I realized that the breech block itself, you can see here, if I can get the focus, where somebody's tried to braise that or weld that together. And you come on the other side here and you can see a definite crack along the bottom here that is not good will that fire probably but are we do we ever want that to stay in there absolutely not so what we've done is we have went ahead and purchased a new one which is right here so we got ourselves a new one now as you can tell with this particular breech block there is no ejector so we've got to take this ejector out of here and that's pretty much it. That's the only thing left on here that we got to pull off is the ejector. And then we will go ahead and switch. It would help you guys see it if I put it in the right spot, wouldn't it? So we got to take your ejector here and move it over to this one. And that'll be all she wrote for this guy. We'll put this in our scrap pile. And then we will start putting the shotgun back together. So this is the one part that we are definitely going to need a punch for. And that'll be right here and this is the other side here so let's go ahead and punch that guy out and as you saw once you get too far in there your actual uh, ejector will actually pop right out of there so now we just need to finish pushing the pin through because we do need the pin for the other one. So now we have our pin and we need our detent. So we gotta pull this out, covering this, make sure that doesn't go anywhere. As you can tell, this is under some pressure. Pull that out. Now we need to take our detent out of here. Pops out. And then our Get it out of there. I have to get something small enough to get back in there. Alright. Now this is just a straw off of the rim oil or the Hornady one shot that I have, but that helped get the spring out of there. So that is everything. So we got all this taken apart. And like I said, this is scrap.